What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. You might think that getting into the IT field is impossible without a computer science degree, but Tech Coach Ralph is here to prove you wrong. Get ready for some jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into this lucrative industry. Listen up, tech enthusiasts! Are you ready to break through into the IT field, but feel like you need a computer science degree to make it happen? Think again! Tech Coach Ralph has some exclusive, mind-blowing secrets to share with you. Get ready to be blown away by his jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into the tech industry without a computer science degree. So get your notepad ready, because Tech Coach Ralph is going to change your life forever. Buckle up, because you're about to embark on a journey to success in the IT field. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another Thursday night. Today is Thursday, October 19th, 2023. We are getting into Software Explorations, hosted by yours truly, Tech Coach Ralph. <clears throat> it has been a very, very interesting week, and this color, I don't like it. <clears throat> Let me see if I can adjust it better. All right, cool. We are good to go. All right, so... Let me adjust the camera a little bit too. There we go. Perfect. So, <clears throat> I saw this on a live stream the other day, and I wanted to see if this actually works, right? So, let's see if we go like this. Uh, let's go. Let's go like this. Does that work? I don't know. We shall see. I know it's a new feature. Oh, reactions unavailable. I wonder why. Oh, well. We shall figure it out. All right, let's go. Ooh, what did I do? All right, cool. So, tonight, software explorations, we are going to be doing more of the page object model in Java. We are going to finish converting Don's favorite website, Uber Eats, into the page object model. We... Did a few of the pages, the page objects last week. We are going to continue with that this week. Um, but before we get into that, we are going to go into our agenda, right? So first and foremost, as always, I want to say thank you to all the newest subscribers. I appreciate you. I am so happy to be able to add value into your lives. I hope you are getting tons and tons of information and tons and tons of value and that you can apply it to your lives and to your careers, to your personal life, whatever the case may be. Um, if you have any questions, always feel free to leave a comment, join the chat. Um, I'm, all, I'm even willing to, if you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one tonight, I am even willing to drop the link so we can have a conversation. Um, but, you know, we're going to be focused on software explorations tonight. Um, and then I have, to, I have to leave on time today because I have a call going on at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, consultation call. So going to jump to that afterwards. So, um, yeah, so that's the plan for tonight. Um, but I also want to say shout out to the tech barbarians who are always working so, so hard. We're learning Python. We're learning data engineering. We're learning automation. We're learning web development. We're learning UI UX. We're learning video editing. We're learning everything. All right. So, Check out the, and, and and that's just for like the top tier, right, uh, of my Tech Barbarians. And then we have in the Patreon <clears throat> where I release videos about like how I updated my resume, uh, quick ways you can use to learn more, how to, um, you know, how to structure your LinkedIn, um, questions to ask in, in interviews, <clears throat> you know, um, and 
I gave one of the one of the questions tips. Like, I'll, t- I'll tell you this, right? I released that video on Monday. One of my Patreon members had an interview on Tuesday, asked the question, and today, <clears throat> today, they're getting the offer. Um, did the question seal the deal? I don't know, but did it help? Definitely, right? Um, so you know, we are we are winning on all levels over here. All right, so shout out to the Tech Barbarians one more time. <laughs> I am so proud of each and every one of you. All right. So let's get into our live show schedule. So we have Sunday afternoons where we have software expirations at 2.15 p.m. Eastern time. It is a similar show to this one, but we are focused on. Uh, so this past Sunday, we went to AWS Secrets Manager because um, I need I have a project I'm working on that I needed to get familiar with that. But we're working through Terraform. So this is coming Sunday. We are going back, back to Terraform where we are going to continue what we're working on, um, setting up an EC2 instance, uh, getting Docker installed on it. Uh, we're going to be, so this Sunday we're going to be putting on, um, we're gonna install Git, we're gonna pull in a repo and we are going to, you know, install that repo and go from there, all right? Uh, Tuesday nights, we have our Q&A sessions. We had an amazing Q&A session this past Tuesday night. It was it was awesome. Um, really appreciate everyone that was there and, and Tuesday nights at 7.15 p.m. Eastern time. And we have Thursday nights. We have more software explorations where it is more QA focused. We are, and tonight, we're like I said, we're going to continue with the page object model. All right. So shout out to our live shows. I love doing the live shows. <laughs> and we have our pre-recorded content on Mondays. We have, and all these times are at 12 p.m. Eastern standard time. Mondays, we have Candid Conversations. And on Wednesdays, this past Monday was about more bad LinkedIn advice, believe it or not, right? And on Wednesdays, we have Software Explorations, Concepts and Overviews. Yesterday, we released a video on test automation frameworks. Uh, in the near future, we can go through, um, we can actually go live to look at a framework that I built. Uh, and what we can probably do is take that framework and externalize it to its own um, to its own package. So it can be imported into pretty much any automation project. And I can put that on, uh, you know, GitHub or something, make that available. All right. So, and then Fridays, we have the bug bite where we review, we review um, different industry bugs. Tomorrow's video is going to be coming out about the Cisco iOS XE bug that is currently happening right now it's been happening for about a month now and we don't know when this is going to get fixed all right so once again all these times are every um, monday wednesday friday at 12 p.m eastern standard time mondays we have candid conversations wednesdays we have software explorations concepts and overviews and fridays we have the bug bite all right <clears throat> so shout out to the live to the pre-recorded show and throughout the week monday through friday we have uh, we have the segments from the Q and A show where we cut up the we cut up the um, questions so that they're into like you know bite sized pieces. Sometimes you just can't sit through a whole two and a two and a half hour show, uh, and you want to digest the content. So we cut it up, make it available for you. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, so yeah. So look after that. It's mon- Monday through Friday at three p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you haven't done so already, I don't know what you're waiting for. But if you find this information valuable, subscribe to the channel, hit the, no- the notification bell, so you can know every time we go live and every time we drop a new video. Tons and tons of content dropped just for you, just so we can add more and more value into your life. And if you haven't done so yet, of course, like the video, share the video. Right? Share it with a friend. So share it with a coworker, somebody who is in the industry who needs to level if if you think somebody if you know somebody who needs to level up share the video with them right um and say do it do it together right take your friend with you right as you get better take the ones that want to get better with you if they don't want to get better then why are they even your friend right cut them off people who don't want to get better cut them off get rid of them they're out of there three three strikes and you're out all right so let's do it 
All right. So what we are going to do, we are going to start the show with a 30 minute timer where we are going to continue with Don's annoying web UI challenge. We were doing it on Sunday. We approached it from a different strategy. We made a lot, a lot of progress. I can um, give uh, a quick review about that. Oh, we did. And then, um, then after we're done with that 30 minutes, we are, and I'm not going to spend more than 30 minutes on it because we have to get to the page object model. We got to finish it up because I have a call at 10. So we need to wrap up the show before that. So we are going to, let me get the timer up. And we are going to make sure I get the software open, open up PyCharm. Challenges and all right, cool. Got it open, and we are going to let's put the thirty minutes up. All right, let's. And we are going to let's close this up. We are going to start up. We'll start up the um, Chaos Camp Web UI challenge. And it started. So now, let me open up a browser. All right, so this is the challenge. Um, we need to be able to double click on this to get to get it to validate that it has the text is has a green background, white text. But the challenge part, the challenging part is every time you refresh, um, it changes the position, and there is this annoying little thing called the shadow root. I call it the shadow row, but it's the shadow root, right? And it changes position. So we need to be able to. Um, we need to be able to capture that and um, and be able to double click on this, right? So if we go over to here and um, here we have the code. So what I this is what this is the logic from this past Sunday, right? Um, when I was looking up the shadow root, it has um, What I found out on one of the ways to select it, which I'm sure there's plenty of ways to do it, right? But um, you need to first select the host of it, and then you need to go to, um, and then you need to do a, a JavaScript execution and say that find, return the shadow root when it's um, of the div, right? So that's what I'm, that's what I'm, um, that's what we're working on here. And what I want to do is loop through it to get all the way until it can find the the tag for um, the UID, right? So, so we're working on this past. Um, so we're working on, that's where we're at, right? So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna give it a run to see what happens. And then we're gonna keep going through it, right? So let's give it a run. And it should go up in the browser. And it's going to fail at the UID selector, right? Which is fine. Um, but it's getting all the way over here. Uh, shadow root level two. So now we want it to loop. So after we get into the first one. That's the one that's using the shadow host here. Now we want to be able to go 
all the way until we get to the last one, right? So what I'm going to do is go to I'm going to copy this right here. And I'm going to put that up here, right? Uh, maybe I will move it right down here. Let's try it here, right? Because at that point, mm, no. Actually, I'm changing the driver. So let's move it back up to the top. Change the driver. Let's try that. So what I want to happen is once it gets to I wanted to say on each time. Try to do this dot Break. So if if this exists, I want to break. Yeah, that's right. If 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 that and break. And let's do a print. Let's see what happens when we do this. I'm curious. Let's try to let's try this. Try uh, is displayed. I don't remember. I'm not sure what's the error that I get here if it doesn't exist. So we're going to try to run it and see what we get. And then we can use that error. So we are getting actually 
move this for now. I want to see what garage gets. So we need to know we need to loop until this displays, all right? So So, okay, so, all right, so we're here. If shadow root is not none, then print the shadow root. And then we want to. So then we want to say, all right, if. Um, try. We're going to do try statement again. We're going to do. We're going to do um, what I'd want to do is set the shadow root to be none again. If shadow root is not none, I want to do it over here so that once it gets here, then it's going to come back up here. If it gets here, it's going to break the loop. So let's see what happens. I want to reset the shadow root. Here, and I'm going to say I'm just putting these comments so I can see what's actually going on. All right, so even if it's getting there, it's going to be failing because I haven't double clicked on this. But what I want to do is <clears throat> let me validate it with the way it looks now. Okay, 
the F string. See what happens. There's nothing there, so. So what I can do is just. You got to an if statement then. Because if it's finding the if it's finding the element in shadow root DOM but it's not displaying anything, I can say if the text does not equal this. Sorry, this is me. This does not then do that. Else, but keep going. Let's try that. So we go with this. All right, so, so now our if statement is working, but we failed on the second part of the loop where we are going into is none tag name give. Tag name give. Here we are.
I'm looking at <clears throat> I'm looking at this page right here. Maybe instead of doing this none. Oh, okay. That's okay. Instead of doing this none right here, so we comment that out. And we should say while element. Try that. Here we can say Okay, let's see what we got going on here. While we have, can we get to this first one? Our shadow root is none. So we did here, we did here. So shadow root is not none. We have one.
data root text is line. So while element, okay, so while element and data root is line, because then do this. Okay, uh, so my mistake. All right, so let's keep going. So we got all the way up to here. I want to know. So keep going, resetting shadow root. See what Huh? Nice little typo in there. Okay, I got you. I do that. So I'll move this to the outside. Do I even need this in here? Oh. Do I even need this in here? Well, this is happening down here. This is not going to be this one. Because the shadow root has never been. Well, shadow root is none. Set the shadow host equals 
Quiet Time Man. Shadow Root equals driver dot bootstrap return arguments dot shadow root. Your shadow root is not none. Then print out number one. Print out number one. Shadow root equals this. Close reset. Here. Shadow root text. Blank. Now, while this is blank, we want to do print out this. And we want to say print shadow room text intensify, which is this. I'm curious. Let me see something real quick. Well, 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 what do we have here? Dawn.
Well, it looks like we're making progress. So if we get this one, we don't need this one anymore. We don't need that. Go here. Just need to get the attribute. Where are we? Let's do another. Do here. Now to pull in the Oh Duh. I have that there. I don't have it here. All right, we need it. Box loop. Why are we not getting?
Click on it, but it's not finding me. So where are we at here? It's clicking on it, but it's not finding the span. Uh, or it's not finding the attribute. So we have to find a way to. So next time we're going to find a way. How do we get to this attribute? So it's clicking on the div in general. Yeah, because it's getting it on the div, and there's no attributes on the div. Okay. So we know we have a, so oh, we know we can find it. We just need to be able to get into that chatter room. So we probably have to go back to that looping stuff until we can get to a span. All right, so that's that for today. Thank you very much, Don. So I think we're gonna have to go back to the loop so we can get to the span. The key is going to be to get to that span. Um, and once we can do that, then we will be able to keep going. So, so we can double click on it. We already have the double click in there. We just need to be able to get the shadow root to the span. So that'll be the goal for next time. All right, cool. That is our challenge for today. And let's get to the page object model. Let's close out. Buffer. All right, so we have project. All right, <clears throat> so we have our um, IntelliJ open and we have Uber Eats open. Let's go to this group. So uh, what, what page are we on here? So we are on the Uber Eats homepage. What did we do so far? So we did the homepage um, page object model. The, and the homepage page object model was done from when we were doing the Python versus um, Java automation, right? So we had this already in there. And then like what we can do, we can also use this project to start building out our framework so we can externalize all of this stuff over here next time. But when, when we go to the um, framework part, and we'll do that. But here we are going to say, all right, so we have our assertion, our search results um, page object, which we did last time. So I'm going to put some comments, right? I'm going to say... Like, um, I'm going to put some to do's in here, right? So, oh, this, is, this is Java to do move to framework. And inside of like, when you do, when you put a tag for to do, it's going to start putting the to do items here, right? Uh, let's see. Here. That way we can just know what we need to do, even if we're not doing it right now.
move right from creation to framework. We're gonna do move uh, driver setup to framework. And that way, when we're doing the framework, we just we just can go through our to dos of what we need to do. Uh, same for this one. This is how you get organized, right? Uh, move. So now we have our restaurants page page object. So let's go through the Oops. to see. Let's see, this one looks really good right here. Path of the bone. I think it's bone this one. Go with this one. And here we are. So the customization. So this is on the product page. All right. So let's go to. I guess it would be menu item page. Let's open the menu. Okay. So we don't have anything. So yes, it's the menu item page, right? So we are going to go to first things first. The menu item page, right? So we are here, right? So we're going to have to move this. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're just on the menu item page. First thing I like to do is let's see web driver driver. Let me select that. And we're gonna do our constructor. And we are going to instantiate. And we're going to do this dot driver equals driver. All right. Now we are going to start getting our selector. So what we can do, let's do this. We're going to split the screen. Just to the right. So let's take this X file. Do find all let's do a quick let's do some quick mistakes. Okay, so in order to do this, we're gonna do find by, and we're gonna do a list, right? So here, import that. And we're gonna do list web, web elements. And we are going to name that all, Customization options. Import that. Okay. 
forgot to put the time up. Let's put 15 minutes on the clock. All right, so we are going to go here. And now, what else do we have on this page? All right. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use the page factory for this one, right? What I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this as fast. All the way here. And I'm going to say private web element. And I'm going to say uh, oh, that's not it. I'm going to say private web element. I'm going to call that um, customization options, or let's say single, let's make it more specific, single customization options, and we're going to go here and say int position of options, open that up and say this one, uh, define element put that in there. Uh, I don't want it to paste that way. Let's go to the special paste the pen cut. There we go. So and we're gonna change the count to a position of up. There we go. Ooh. Oh. By dot text guy. So let's go here. Okay, so here we go. Let's close all that. So we have we have. So we have return driver, find element, single customization. So if we take this right here and we take it to the home page and we say amount of customizations, pick as many. And that is going to be but first we're gonna to have to include the all right, so we have that. We take this. And we go all the way down here, and let's see, we're just going to go here, take that out, menu item dot, oh, we need to set our getters, that's why, so let's set a getter here. Put that in there. So now if we go 
here, we should just be able to do get all dot size. So that should work, right? Come on, click. All right, so it's going to loop through that. And now it would pass. You wanted to let's look at the site real quick. So let's see what these selectors are. Here. Oh, okay. So that is if you can like have the We can expand them. So that, all right, so this one right here is if you could um say like you want more than one, right? So what we need to do is say if that's the option. So if we take this right here. So that's found. We need an if for say three. Let's check this right here. Why count would work right here? That's weird. One okay, that's what it is. All right, cool. So got the okay, so we have a good understanding here. So what we're gonna do, so this is gonna work, all right. So what we're gonna do, we're going to we're gonna go and we're going to save this here. So we say public void. Click single customization 
option and we're going to pass the position and we're going to say I'm going to custom around here custom position of option dot click all right so now we should just be able to click this one Let me undo that, right? So what we're doing is we want to we want to add this one right here to the to the page object, right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into here. And we're gonna say public void click single customization option. And we're going to go to single customization option, position to choose, dot click, right? So now we should be able to take these. Um, hmm. This part right here is a bit. I don't know what this one is. So if we go back and we hover over here, wait, two, that needs to. Oh, okay, so this, all right, so let me go to three here, right? However, in this one, in that one, that would be if within the first one, we have to think about that. <clears throat> this is, we'll do the first one then. So we'll go like this, right? Place this one. And then count. So that should be taken care of, right? Now for this one, we can call this one like maybe second customization option and then just add this two to it, I'm guessing. Ah, okay, so we can't use that. Look at this, what we could do. We could do... Could do All right.
right, let's go to break. All right, a bit stuffy tonight, but we are pushing through because we do not miss, we do not quit. All right, so let's put a five minute timer for break. And I want to see, I want to search some more cybersecurity jobs. By the way, we are having a, a welcome to cybersecurity panel on Saturday night. Uh, I'm going to be moderating the panel. We have um, a panel of three um, well tenured cybersecurity experts that we will be you know answering general questions about you know so many people are interested in getting to cybersecurity so we are going to be um we're going to be answering your questions so i will be sharing the link on my channel and i'm going to see if i can stream it from my channel as well um and that way you know we can you can ask questions and you can tune into the panel get your questions answered and we can go from there, all right? So before we do that, so let's go to see these cybersecurity jobs. Let's look for a security architect, all right? Pull up LinkedIn. And I've seen like a lot of people saying that they um, they want to get into cybersecurity, but like the no code portion of it. Why are you guys afraid of code? You know, like to me, being able to write code is how you distinguish and separate yourself from the rest. And um, it's like learning a new language, you know, um, being able to do the complex stuff is what is going to take you to that next level. I always try to push myself to do what other people can't do. All right, so let's take a look at this, all right? So um, let's go to the screen. All right, so let's see, this is a cybersecurity engineer in El Segundo, California. Let's see. Response. So, master's requirements, master's degree in business, information security, information systems, computer science, engineering, minimum 10 years of experience, CompTIA, Security Plus, or equivalent, uh, Department of Defense, I'm guessing, is DOD. Ability to work geographically independent. Just looking at these requirements, it is, I'm pretty sure it's tough to get these. Uh, let's see here. I don't see any pay. All right. So this one, senior cybersecurity engineer, and this is a search for security architect, right? So we're finding, um, cybersecurity engineers, right? So let's see, what do we have under that? Responsibilities, design, enterprise, skill, cybersecurity solutions. Let's see how many people applied for it. 23 people applied for it. This is a hybrid position. The qualifications, bachelor's degree in computer science, eight years of working experience in information technology. Let's do this. Let's, let's filter for entry level. So we get that way. So in Richmond, Virginia, information security engineer, 314 applicants, hybrid. I would figure that in the DMV area, there's going to be a lot of applicants because uh, a lot of those companies are probably working with government contracts. 
Let's see. So what are the requirements? Bachelor's degree, three years of working experience, experience with identifying security risk and developing proactive recommendations to mitigate, knowledge of network and architecture and security best practices. This one seems like an entry level. But let's see. Cybersecurity en engineer for break, bus, chicken. After training period, Get a move be... on. Back to work. Chop, chop. Let's go. Come on. Get a move on. Back to work. Back to work. Back to work. After a training period, this will be a hybrid schedule. You will be expected to be on site in Westfield, Wisconsin, at our corporate offices two to three days per week. Relocation assistance is available. All right, so essential functions, maintain awareness of latest critical information, security vulnerabilities, threats, exploits, identify and address performance issues with SIEM and log management platforms, perform care and tracking updates and maintenance of SIEM and log management, qualifications, bachelor's degree, and two years of information security experience, or an associate degree and four years of experience. Security Plus or GSEC certification required or able to obtain within a year. Minimum of four to five years of information security experience and preferably in a large scale environment. So here's a question, right? <clears throat> For all the people who want to go into cybersecurity. How are you getting into it, right? Are you going to a um, you know traditional school, maybe a community college or a traditional university? Is there some type of boot camp that you're doing? Or are you trying to self-learn it? Um, what is it that you're doing? Because a lot of these um, cybersecurity jobs, uh, they might they might require a security clearance. Are you able to get a security clearance, right? Um, you no. Know, how do you research the things that you say you want to get into? Do you just hear about it on like a show or something? And you're like, oh, I'm going to do cybersecurity. And then you're like, what the hell is cybersecurity? Right? Um, how much research are you doing to see like, okay, what does it take to obtain a security plus and a GSEC? Right? What does it take to, to obtain a clearance? Can I actually get a clearance? Can I pass a background check? Right, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure if you're going into cybersecurity, there's a lot of companies that are going to be requiring background checks as well. You know, uh, let's see, journeyman cybersecurity engineer. This is a full time position located at Hanscom Air Force Base in Bedford, Massachusetts. Duties include, but not limited to, and then they have a whole book of stuff experience so education high school diploma or equivalent right experience seven years of directly related experience five of which must be in the department of defense understanding of cybersecurity and DOD cloud infrastructure understanding of agile including CICD DevSecOps and Dev DevOps possess the ability to effectively communicate in both written and verbal forms of highly technical um, topics, preferred experience, bachelor's or master's degree in a professional engineering discipline from an ABET accredited educational program, along with three years of experience in the respective technical profession discipline to form three of which must be in the DOD. Like I said, you got to research the things that you want to get into. All right. So let's get back to our. Let's get back to our page object model. So we are trying to see what is the best option for. That. Um, clicking on the options, right? So these are the options we're trying to see. Trying to click on these options over here. Uh, 
All right. So let's put our timer up. 20 minutes. Actually, not those 20 minutes. We want. It's time to do 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 So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here. I'm going to move this away. We're going to go here. So we're gonna move this down this way. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go here and I'm going to copy that. Copy this guy from here all the way to here. And we are going to go here and we're going to say and the beauty of the page object model is by changing it in this private, right? It's, it's only being called here so that um, I don't need to necessarily change this in all the um, all the tests that are calling it. So let's do this, another private web element, single second optimization option, int position option, or position of option. And we're going to just paste special update these variables. And we are going to go to close that out. That's the second second one. And we're just gonna add public void clip. Second customization. All right. And we're just going to do the same thing for the third one. All right, and we will do the same thing for that. And we're just gonna call this one third. All right, so now if we go back to the code over here, we should be able to go to menu item dot click second count and menu item clip single third count. Now we should be able to get rid of these. All right, so here we are. OK. 
Customization, pick one. I'm gonna try to run this, see what happens. We don't want them to do too much and then things aren't working and then we have to um, start all over again and it's a whole mess, so let's see what we get. What, what's going on here? Ah, so it's gonna be perfect. Oh, we are. going on here uh, did not start a session all right so all right let's see there is a newer version So it is so hard to keep up with these changes from Firefox. What version are we at here? Let's look at the palm file. Right, Let's see here. Hmm. The issue we're having is these updates that Chrome is doing, it is um, it's not allowing the thing to start so this version of chrome driver only supports can we get the latest one then let's see
All right, so I was looking at the driver manager to look for the how to get the latest version. So uh, 5.53 is the current latest version. Let's see if we can do that. Clear in. Go here. So and then, right, so what I did was in the POM file, I bumped it to the latest version. And we are going to refresh our Maven to get the latest version. And uh, and we're going to run it again. If we still get the error, then we're going to um, put an option to clear the cache. All right, so. Right again. All right, there we go. Why is that? Ah, they changed the text. And see, that's why I don't like using text, right? So now they changed the search here. So I don't like using text. But their selectors are so bad that you don't always find it. So, however, it's a good. This is a good time to see the page object model in work, right? In, in action, right? So let's minimize this. I'm gonna go to here and we are going to go to here let's take us to home we're going to go to here and then we're going to go to here find food and we're going to change that to search here like it says on the website and we're gonna try to let's see what this is. All right, so let's try to run that again. Let's give this a close. And let's try to run it again. Now we should click on one of the stores, click on the item where it's Chipotle looks like. Now we gotta take care of this portion. Well, this part is, should work. We just didn't do the page object model for this part yet, which we gotta take care of that next.
I'm on, I'm muted. All right, so let's look in our code. Let's see if we have. Let's see what this is. So this should probably be in some type of modal. So we can say. Say if we go See what this one is. Then drill down to All right. Uh, lunch break. Lunch break. So. That's more like it. If we do that, should be able to do this. Oh, I don't care. So, okay, all right, you can see it. So um, right now I'm just messing with the selector, the uh, XPath, which I am the king of XPath, just letting you guys know. Uh, let's see, we have, this one is what we wanted. And if we look at the code again, that's the pick ones, though. We have the pick minis, we have the pick ones. Why would all right? So if I do this oh so as if i do here then this comes up we could do it if this comes up then d 
do that. I would probably do it on the test object because you never know. You see, every time you click on something, there's a customization. You'd want to do that. All right, we're gonna look at a different position on LinkedIn. Let's see, let's go for, let's go for, data privacy officer, let's try that. So, compliance and data privacy officer. They do not say any requirements. Let's check a different one. NYC Department of Health. For this entry level position, for assignment level one, only physical and biological and environmental sciences and public health, master's degree from accredited college. For so this one, so this one is for all right. So there's a compliance and data privacy officer. Let's 
Sing an E. So this is VP of ORM Technology and Cyber Risk Officer. So we'll have seven years of hands-on technical experience in information, in information security, risk, and controls within globally complex, dispersed, and diverse organizations. We'll be well-versed in information security governance. All right. All right, all right, let's see. Hmm. Not many of these positions, so let's go for another one. Let's try a penetration tester. So this position, Jacksonville, Florida, hybrid penetration tester, 70K to 100K a year. Proven experience as penetration tester or in similar cybersecurity role, strong knowledge of common security frameworks and standards, OWASP, NIST, ST, CIS. Proficiency using penetration testing tools should add, such as Metasploit, Burp Suite, Nmap, Wireshark. Familiarity with various operating systems, network protocols, and cloud environments. Excellent communication and reporting report writing skills, ability to work both independently and as part of collaborative team, relevant certifications. Okay. Let's see what else we got. So pen test vulnerability anal analysis in South Carolina, 108K, 231K. Let's see. Bachelor's degree. Three get a to five move on. Years. Back to work. Chop, chop. Let's go. Come on. Get a move on. Back to work. Back to work. Back to work. Three to five years of security or information security experience. Willingness to work in a 24 7 environment. Are you willing to work in a 24 7 environment? Three years of experience conducting IT compliance assessments. One year experience. Conducting penetration testing. Certified information system security professional. Global information assurance certification. Or EC Council ethical hacking certification. Looks like a good position, but, you know, some people aren't willing to sacrifice working 24 seven or like being not it's not that you work 24 seven, but you're always available, you know, you're on call always, always available. Cause you know, when things hit the fan, you got to get into action and fix it. All right. All right. Let's do our, I'm going to put, 15 minutes for our last segment so I can get out of here on time. See what we can do. If we don't finish today, we will finish next time. All right, so here we are. So what we need to do, what we're saying is we need to do our if statement to say, if when you click on this, you get a pop-up, then enter that information. So what we're gonna do, we are going to move this I'm going to keep this as the menu page, right? We're going to move this to, so call this pick one, right? So we're going to, take this, we're going to go here, and we're going to say another, let's rename this to, All pick many options. 
and we will say okay and we are going to go to another find by path equals list web element uh pick one customization options and we're going to follow in the footsteps of this one i have to rename this one actually Actually, I'm not gonna move. I'm not gonna put this one here. I'm gonna put this at the bottom. Single. Single first or single essay pick one customization option. Now, copy from here. Right. All right. And here we're going to say All right. I can't stop sneezing. All right, so let's see here. We need to, we need to do the getter. Sorry, here. All right, we're gonna 
take that, go here, and we're going to replace this one. So now we need to add public void split uh, single pick one customization option. So this is choose. <clears throat> All right, so here and we're going to say single one customization option position to choose dot clip all right so now we're here and now we're going to call this one into so we're going to replace this right we're going to say menu item dot that one dot all right or we're going to say so now we need to say if the modal is open, then choose the first option, right? So what we want to do is we want to tag that onto that onto this method. That way it'll be part of that, right? So let's click it here and we're gonna say take this right here. And that's the part of the page object model where you are optimizing your, um, you're optimizing your, you're optimizing your, um, your code, right? So you're making it the most efficient possible because on your test cases, you want it to be very simple to understand. So here we're going to go in here, put some comments. So we want to say All right, so we're going to go back up to the find by and we're going to say find by next path we're going to say list the reason why we're using a list is because we want to get the size of the of how many of the modals display. And if the modal that displays is zero, then that means it doesn't exist, right? So you'll see in a second. Pick one modal modal, right? <clears throat> Go back to the site. If we click on here, we could do, we could just simply do this one right here. Right, so we can do that. I'm going to undo this so I can get the Selector again. So now if we go back to here, I'm gonna say that this X path is simply this. So what we're gonna say is if this is greater than zero, then go inside. So while we're here, then we can do um it's gonna be X path. And we could do the 
ったんだよ。なんだろう。あ、もういるぞ。ちょっと Let's see what happens, right? So let's go to here and we get that. And we have that. Let's say we take this, right? We go here and we say web element. Is a pick one modal choice, right? And we do a getter for that, or for both of them, I guess. Right, so if we go back over here. Got that, we got that. So we have to say, all right, so now we're going to say <clears throat> if get modal pick one modal size is greater than zero, always writing Python when you're doing Java. If Get pick one modal dot size is greater than zero. Then we want to do get pick one modal choice dot click. And we probably want to do that save button as well. Let's make sure we don't have that inside of our, let's make sure we don't have it in here, all right? So here, I click save. Okay, so we need to get that, yeah. So we need to get that, all right? So let's do here, what button is this? This is going to be inside the modal. And it's going to be Actually button, maybe. So if we do So we are about to wrap it up. Let's just, let me see if I can finish this part real quick. It's like, and this is a problem when they don't put good selectors or they don't use the data test IDs. It's like almost impossible to select this stuff. I have an idea though. So I'm going to do, what we can do is contains there we go. But if they if they were to change this text to something else in the future, then it would be a mess for us.
But the good thing is you can always, like, using the page object model, it's so much easier to update it. So let's say we're going to go up here, actually another menu item, go up to our So let's add our getter. go here and we say new item dot dot actually no I don't want to do that. I want to say let's do, a, let's do a method for it right or so if we're here we'll say public void click add to cart button there we go print All right, so now we take this, go here, go here, and we do that. We do not need that anymore. And the last one that we would really have would be this one for the, which let's throw it in real quick, right? So let's do, let's do that really, really quick, right? So this is gonna be, um, Shopping cart. So let's do web driver driver. Import that. Web driver, driver. 
this dot driver equals driver and we're gonna do page factory dot set this is a driver dot this always mix that i always get that fix that up but i always fix it though so at line by As you can see, I, I always prefer to use CSS selectors if possible. Uh, XPath really can slow down the page, so, or can really slow down your script. So when it's possible, use CSS selectors, and if not, then XPath it is. Always go for ID first though, ID or name first. And then if that's not available, use the CSS selector. And if that's not available, go for XPath. You should always be able to find an XPath. All right, web elements. Uh, shopping cart item. And we're going to add our getter. Getter. And then we're going to go to here. Go to the top. We're going to import our shopping cart. Shopping cart equals new shopping cart driver. And we go down here and we're going to say. We got that in there, so we're gonna say, I'm just gonna change this out right here to shopping cart dot shopping cart icon. Here we go. And we should let's run it real quick and then we'll wrap it up for tonight. See how far we get, but we are done. So I'm gonna start getting ready to wrap it up. See how far we get with this. All right, all right, all right, on this one, okay. Now, because nothing popped up, it should just add to cart. How you like them apples? So we have our page object model fully going here, right? There is no, there's no, um, there's no selectors, there's no locators inside of the Uber Eats um, test, right? Only thing that's here is like the framework stuff that this would be going to the framework. But this is all the way page object modelized, right? And we have the we have the customizations that depending on the restaurant that you get, what to do from that route. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, um, like I said, we are always winning, right? We do not miss here, right? So that's our show for tonight. I gotta get going. Um, I really really appreciate you um, being here, whether you, whether you followed along live or whether you watched on the replay. I hope that. Um, this will give you a good insight on how the page object model works. Uh, it's coming soon. We are going to be doing the, um, we're going to do the, we're going to be like refactoring this to take out the um, framework, right? So we can go through the framework together and all that good stuff, right? Um, but yeah, so that's the page object model. And so we, like, do you see how much we reduce this code, right? It's, it's so much clean. It's so much cleaner that you can easily understand. But Gotta get going. All right. So thank you for those who uh who watch the video, who watch the live stream. Thank you for those who watch it on the replay. If you haven't done so yet, 
uh, like the video share the video subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and of course check out the patreon because there is tons and tons of good information in there to help you um take your take your career take your technical career to the next level so we will be back again on sunday check out tomorrow the episode of the bug bite and until next time friends thank you for following along and this is tech coach ralph signing off you might think that getting into the it field is impossible without a computer science degree but tech coach ralph is here to prove you wrong Get ready for some jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into this lucrative industry. Listen up, tech enthusiasts! Are you ready to break through into the IT field, but feel like you need a computer science degree to make it happen? Think again! Tech Coach Ralph has some exclusive, mind-blowing secrets to share with you. Get ready to be blown away by his jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into the tech industry without a computer science degree. So get your notepad ready, because Tech Coach Ralph is going to change your life forever. Buckle up, because you're about to embark on a journey to success in the IT field. Thank you for your patronage.